She's 75 years old and feeling hopeless and physically exhausted. Why? Because she can't afford to stop working. 50% have no retirement savings at all. I don't want to have to work when I'm 60 and, and you know, I want to have a choice whether I want to go to work. No one really wants to hire someone that's over 60. It makes me feel hopeless. I am 75 years old and I'm still working to make ends meet. I did not think I would be in this situation after my divorce. I had to make my own way. It was scary. When I was 65, I went to a career connections class. I realized that no one really wants to hire someone that's over 60. It makes me feel hopeless. I work at a low paying job at a bookstore 24 hours a week. It is hard at my age to stand up for eight hours a day. My body's just not what it used to be. And my job and social security is not enough money to pay for my rent and my life. Inflation has really taken its toll on my finances. And my living expenses are about thirty-five dollars to $3,800 a month, and I only bring in twenty-three. I don't want to continue having to work low-paying jobs, but I have to. I'm living on the edge, and if my health failed, I could be in real trouble. Betty, thanks for being here. Well, thanks for having me. Well, you say it's exhausting to have to work at 75 years old. It can be. Because you got to stand up all day for one thing. That's right. And you don't get paid a whole lot of money. That's right. Where does it put you to work the way you do plus Social Security? Well, it puts me in a position where almost every month I have to spend down the savings that I have. And to make ends meet, I have to use my savings Social Security and the job income. And it, <laughs> it's scary when the savings goes down, down, down. You don't know how long you're going to live. And uh, you don't know if you're going to wear out your savings. That's not something that you really hoped or planned for when you were living your life to this point. No, I never... Uh, I never thought I'd be in this position. Do you ever take any trips? Taking trips is kind of out of the question. It is out of the question because of the price of gas, hotel rooms, if I need to stay in a hotel. And uh, I don't take those trips. Y'all don't either. <laughs> and she's 75. We can't afford to. Joining us also is Erica, a senior employment specialist at the Senior Source, which not only advocates and protects the rights of older adults, but also helps them to find employment, which is not always easy when you get up in years. Erica, thank you for being here. Thank you. What, how do you get employment for somebody that's 70, 75 years old? So it, it depends on the person. You know, when I speak with somebody, the first thing we're doing is we're assessing whatever their gaps to employment are. For different people, it may be transportation. It may be um, just learning how to modernize their resume or just finding ways to reskill themselves. So it varies. It just depends on the client. Over the last seven months, you've seen a rise in working among mm -hmm those that are over 65, 70 years old? Yes, I've been with the Senior Source for almost eight years, and I think what I've noticed since the pandemic is that my clients who maybe we're running into every now and then crisis situations, they're living in a constant state of crisis, whether it's, I can't afford my rent this month, do you have a job lead so that I can start working Monday? And so I think that's probably the biggest thing is that I'm noticing is that my clients are looking for work now. Yeah, you know, when we look at retirement in America, the average couple says the math works out where they're talking about $2 million they have to have stacked up over the 30 or 40 years they were working in order to retire. And only 9% have more than 500,000 saved up. 50% have no retirement savings at all. 56% have a 401k, but it doesn't have enough in it. And 40% of those that do have a 401k have had to withdraw uh, from it in order to live, in order to protect their home. Over 40% of the people that are over 50 say they just don't have any retirement savings at all because they're using every penny they have 
to live. And you guys, at the end of the month, you have maybe $130 left to do necessities that are other than categories, right? So not much money. No, not at all. Nope, not at all. No goals, no saving, no problem. But does that popular Gen Z mantra also spell no future? I'm going to tell y'all exactly what I did to buy my first house when I was 23 years old. First and foremost, you need to understand that this is going to be the largest purchase of your lifetime. So this is nothing to play games about. After I found a mortgage lender for myself, he told me step by step everything I needed to do in order to qualify for a mortgage. I got to work and I literally saved my money. I was disciplined. After nine months, I finally got to start house shopping and found the perfect house and closed within 11 months. You just heard from Jennifer, who was just 23 years old when she bought her first home and says she is concerned about her fellow Gen Zers. You can't use generalities about everything, but she says an awful lot of them do have a lack of goals. And boy, I'll talk about that in a minute, but that's not you. You said, I do have goals, I do want some things, and you decided that you weren't gonna be part of this generation that we see described back here, quiet quitters and lazy girl jobs and do the least amount that you can possibly do. You decided you wanted to set some goals and achieve some things and you bought a house. Yes, I how did. Do you, how do you do that? So to start, I mean, my biggest motivation came from my parents because exactly like your story and kind of what you guys are going through, my parents are in their early 60s. Um, they're still working, not by choice, but because they have to. Um, and so that's where my motivation came from. I was like, I, I see my parents every day getting up, going to work, and I told myself, I don't want to be like that. You know, I don't, I, I don't want to have to work when I'm 60 and, and, you know, I want to have a choice whether I want to go to work or not. And so that's what's been motivating me. Um, but I went to college. I graduated in 2020. Um, and after that, I had no idea what I wanted to do. Um, but I knew I wanted to get into real estate. Um, and so I told myself, well, let's start by purchasing my first house. And I had no idea how I was going to do that either. But I reached out to a mortgage lender. He told me exactly what I needed to do. Um, and then I got to work. Um, and then every single month I would save all my paychecks. Um, and then 11 months later, I was able to close on my first house. Yeah. Well, I'm really proud of you for doing Thank that. You. And you had to say no to a lot of impulses and influences from friends, right? My friends would ask me to go out of the country on vacations and it was so hard to say no. Um, but I had to because, and I literally would tell them, you know, I'm, you know, my goal is to purchase a house right now. I have to get the house. Once I get the house, you know, then we can go on vacation. Every day I would pack my lunch for work. I wouldn't go out and eat. Um, you know, I was saving my money. Um, and then, you know, on the weekends I would do things like working out or just hanging out around the house with family, doing things that, you know, I didn't have to spend money doing. And I told myself, you know, sacrificing fun for a short period of time is much more rewarding than staying in the same spot in my life for months and years. Yeah, that sounds so simple when you say it, but it's hard to do. It's, oh, and I'm not gonna say, it's super hard. It's much harder to choose discipline than it is to just say, forget the goals. But like I said, it's worth it. I want people to hear that because I, you know, I talked about this doom spending. A lot of your friends just say, I'm not worrying about retirement. I'm just going to live for the now. Yeah. And I think the problem is like a lot of people, they don't have any goals, like you were saying. Um, and the problem is people don't have goals because there's a lack of knowledge. People don't know that they can buy a house. People don't know that they can be an investor. People don't know what's attainable. They just tell themselves, I'll never be able to do that. For me, I go get the information. And I tell myself, you know, even, even if it'll take you a year or two or three to save that money to do what you want to do, you know, it'll happen. That's better than never happening. Um, yeah, you so. bet. Now, Gay and her husband, Don, are in our audience and have been thrust back into the workforce in their 70s. This is evidence of the fact that our country is in peril. Thank both of you for being here. Thank you. Um, um, what do you think's going on that's pushed both of you back into the workforce? We 
we love to eat. <laughs> <laughs> it's a habit, isn't it? Yeah, it's a bad habit. I've had it a long time. Yeah. I'm glad that we're able to work. I, I feel blessed every day that I can get up and go to work. Uh, there are a lot of people at our age that aren't. So that is a blessing, but at the same time, when you know you have to, it makes it all the more difficult to try to enjoy part of life that right. we have here. Of course, I don't know that we'll ever enjoy life like we used to in America, but it could be a dream. Do you think our government's putting us in peril? Absolutely. Absolutely. The very fact that you have said repeatedly today, we're printing more money. Mm -hmm. That's going the wrong direction. So people at our age know if you can't afford it, you shouldn't get it. Mm -hmm. And we've, we're at the age where we did use credit along the way, but 15 years ago, we said, it's got to change. We literally said, we've got to get debt free. Mm -hmm. yeah. And we're driving an older car because I don't want my adult children to have to pay my bills if something happens. Yeah. And like he said, we're blessed. We're in good health to be our age. I, I'll be honest with you. I, I grew up really poor. And, um, you know, credit was not something that was, was part of our family. When you grow up poor, you're on a cash basis, that, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. And in my life, I've never had a car payment. Ever have I ever had a car payment in my life. Now, I've driven some real <laughs> crummy cars <laughs> in my life. The first one my sister gave me, mm -hmm. and you could only drive at 37 miles an hour. <laughs> uh, I'm serious, because at 38, it started shaking real bad. <laughs> but, I mean, 37 was better than walking. That's true. But I've just never had a car payment. I just didn't ever want to go into debt. And people just sometimes don't think that way. But I'd rather have something that was crummy, but I owned it, mm -hmm. than it owned me. Mm -hmm. right. and, and sometimes I think we need to get back to that as a country. If you can afford it, you buy it. And if you can't, you don't. Yeah. 